G'day everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Diane and this is Peppa and uh, I'm converting a Toyota coaster into our future full-time home. In this video, I'm going to be doing the insulation inside my bus. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why I chose to use the insulation that I'm using and then I'm going to show you how I go about installing it. So I'm going to start off right from the beginning by saying that I am by no means an expert in insulation. In fact, I knew pretty much nothing about insulation before I started building this bus. Um, so this is not meant to be a video on how you should definitely install insulation in your bus. Um, this is just a video showing how I'm installing the insulation in my bus. There's a lot of information out there and to be honest, trying to research what the options were and what's the best insulation to use in my bus was really making my brain hurt. Um, so I've tried to make the best decision based on what I've read and comments that I've heard other people make from their experiences. So in terms of the sort of insulation that's available, there's lots of different types. Um, I guess the main ones are things like fiber bats that you can get. So made from either fiberglass or um, some are made from wool. I think you can even get some made from recycled denim fibers. There are the polystyrene types of insulation. So they come in like rigid foam blocks. Um, that you cut to shape. Some have reflective foil on either side, some don't. Um, then there's the option to have spray, closed cell spray foam. From what I've read, I think most of them are pretty similar. If they're installed correctly, they have fairly similar R values in terms of the effectiveness of the insulation. Um, and particularly for something like a coaster bus that is you know, probably 30% glass windows. My feeling is that any kind of insulation you put in is probably going to help to a certain extent. So my decision about the sort of insulation to use was not so much based on what I thought was going to be the most effective or what had the greatest R value, but was more based on the practicalities of installing it into the bus and um, some of the other features of the insulation. So for instance, a lot of people use the the, the fiber bats, um, so things like earth wool, um, woolen bats. A lot of people put those in the buses because they're relatively cheap. They're very easy to kind of stuff in all the little odd spaces and, and nooks and crannies that you can't get more rigid insulation pieces into. So a lot of people do use those and I think if they're installed correctly and not compressed too much, then they would offer fairly good insulation. But there are a few problems with them and the reason I didn't want to use that sort of insulation in my bus um, was because over time, it, if, if you're installing it in the wall cavities, over time, with, especially with the movement of a vehicle, that insulation, the bats can kind of sag and fall down to the bottom just with the effects of gravity. So obviously then you've, lo you've lost some of your insulation value. The other big problem and the main reason why I didn't want to use that in my bus is that that kind of insulation, those fiber type insulation materials can actually hold moisture and you know I've just spent months fixing up leaks and treating rust in this bus the last thing I want is to put something in it that if it gets wet is going to retain that moisture and if that's up against the metal frame of the bus well then you're inviting rust and so on so obviously I don't want that and that was the main reason why I decided not to go for that type of insulation in the bus at all. The other thing with that kind of insulation is it's quite irritating. If you've got sensitive skin like I have or you're prone to allergies, um, it can be very irritating because there's lots of little fiberglass fibers. It's very itchy. You have to make sure that you wear really good protective clothing. You cover your skin when, you, when you're dealing with it. It's just not very nice to handle. I've seen some people use the spray foam, so literally filling all the cavities with um, expanding spray foam and I believe that would be an excellent insulator. Um, the problems with that is for me, one, it's quite expensive. You can do it yourself but um, it's the sort of thing that probably requires a professional, someone with a bit of experience to do it properly. And the, the, the other big downside for me was that that's a very permanent 
kind of uh, ins insulation because once that foam is in there and it's set it's extremely hard to get rid of so if for any reason down the track um, you did have a leak or you did have some rust problems that needed to be fixed or you know if if you're in a, um, a vehicle accident and you had panel damage that needed to be repaired and you had to take some panels off then you know that insulation is going to be in the way it just makes that kind of thing a lot more complicated so again I didn't want to go down the route of using the spray foam insulation the kind of insulation I've decided to go for is the rigid polystyrene and the one that I'm using is called foil board it's a polystyrene foam comes in big big sheets and on either side it has aluminium reflective foil so the number one reason why I chose to use the foil board insulation is that it doesn't hold moisture. So it doesn't matter if it gets wet, it's not likely to, to retain that water and sit it there against the metal causing rust. So that was a big reason. So the other reasons why I chose the foil board are that it's super lightweight and obviously that's a consideration when you're converting a Toyota coaster, you're very limited by the amount of weight that the bus can carry. So anything that you can do to minimize the weight of the materials that you use is important. Important. Because it's a rigid polystyrene, it, you can put it in the wall cavities and it will hold its shape. It's not going to sag over time or fall down to the bottom of the, the cavity. And so once it's in there, it, it stays in position and cover, continues to cover the space. The other thing with foil board is that it's actually fire retardant. So it's nowhere near as flammable as some other types of insulation. Uh, so that's a big plus for me as well. So to insulate my bus, I'm actually going to be using two different sorts of insulation. So the first one is the foil board, and I'm going to be using that to fill as many of the spaces within the frame as possible. So all the cavities in between the ceiling beams and the metal frame of the walls. So you'll see when I come to install it that the foil board will fill all of the spaces in between the metal frame of the bus, but it won't actually be doing anything to, to cover over the frame itself. So so for that purpose I'm going to be using a second type of insulation to cover the entire lot and the one that I'm going to be using for that is called a metal and thermal break and it's a um, I guess you would describe it as like a thick blanket so it's about seven or eight millimeters thick it's got a core of foam material and then on either side of that it's got a reflective aluminium foil coating and my plan is to Put that over the top of the foil board and it will also cover the bits of the frame in between the foil board sheets and the reason I'm doing that is because if I was just to simply fill the cavities with the foil board and leave the bits of metal frame in between exposed the risk is that that creates what's called a thermal bridge so you can still get heat transfer being conducted through the metal from between the inside and the outside of the bus and the risk with that is that you can get condensation forming along the, the bits of metal that are still exposed that aren't properly insulated so in order to try and prevent that I'm going to be covering the whole lot including the metal frame with the thermal brake sheet and hopefully that will help to minimize heat transfer but also will hopefully act as a vapor barrier to prevent condensation forming inside the bus. So these are the foil board sheets that I'm going to be using. Um, so as you can see it's a rigid polystyrene and it's got aluminium reflective film on each side. I've chosen to go with 25 mil thickness to do my bus um, and the reason for that is uh, the gap that I've got in the ceiling cavity here is about 40 millimeters it's a fraction more than 40 millimeters um, and it's important when you're installing foil board it's very important that you leave an air gap between the surface of the metal and the foil board sheet itself so you need to have an air gap um, there and then the foil board sheet. So now foil board you can actually get uh, spaces so foil board make these spaces they're just little squares of uh, foam that have got a very sticky adhesive backing on them um, and the idea with these is that you stick these onto the surface and then the foil board sheets go up against that so these things are actually creating 
um, the air gap and these are about 15 millimeters thick so it just works out that if I use these on the roof that'll give me an air gap of 15 millimeters and then my 25 mil foil board sheet will make up the 40 mil so when I put these foil board sheets in with the air gap in place they should sit roughly flush um, with the bottom of this frame here so that's why I chose to go with that thickness. Um, I'm also going to do the same for the wall cavities. The wall cavities are a little bit thicker, um, but you'll see when I come to install them there, there's a lot of ridges and things, and I think the 25mm will work well in those sections as well. And it was just easier to order the sheets in all the same thickness. Um, I have one sheet here that's a little bit thinner than the rest. It's a 15 mil sheet and I'm going to be using that in a few sections at the back where I'm actually going to be putting insulation over some of the windows that I've blocked off. Um, but for the rest of the bus I'm using 25 millimeters uh, and hopefully that will um, be sufficient. So the way I installed the foil board was just to work on one section at a time and first of all I put the spacers in. Now you don't actually have to use the full square of each spacer. They come with a little split already in them so they're relatively easy to pull apart and that basically just means you get twice as many spacers for your dollar. So for these large sections I basically stuck a spacer in each corner and then a couple in the middle just tried to space them out so that the sheet of foil board would be pretty evenly supported. And then I measured the space and I made sure to measure all four sides because some of these sections are not entirely square. Um, and I tried to, to cut the foil board as accurately as possible. The tighter you can get the foil board in these cavities, obviously the better seal and also the easier it will be to actually keep it up in there when you're doing the taping. So the foil board itself is pretty easy to cut. You just need to make sure that you've got a nice sharp Stanley knife and a decent straight edge to do the cutting. It also helps if the knife that you're using has an extendable blade. So I've got one of those knives that have replaceable blades that just snap off and I found extending the blade out a fair way, like about an, an inch and a half past the end of the knife, just made it a lot easier to cut because the blade could reach all the way through the foil board sheet. And then once I had my piece cut, it was just a matter of pushing it up into the cavity and taping the edges to hold it up in place. This green tape that I'm using is actually foil board joining tape, so it's specifically designed to cover joins in the foil board. These center sections are a bit tricky because on either side there's that um, metal angle, so it actually goes in a little bit on each side. Um, after a bit of trial and error, I found the easiest way for me to do it was to actually do this in three sections. So I cut one piece and then pushed it up into the lip on one side. I cut a second piece, pushed it right up on the other side and then cut a third piece, which I was able to just fit in between those two down the middle. And you can see on this piece here what the air gap actually looks like. So I've got this piece of foil board pressed up against the spaces that are stuck to the roof and you can see that air gap there above the sheet of foil board. And just be aware that cutting polystyrene is a messy business. You're going to end up with snow all over your bus floor. So make sure that you've got a good broom and a dustbin and a good vacuum cleaner so that you can regularly clean all this up and it's not blowing everywhere. I've done as much as I can on the ceiling for now. Oh, it's hot in here. Um, there's still a couple of sections I have to do. I need to get some conduit to run 
this wire from the fans in um, and cut a little bit of the section out of the metal to pass that through. So I want to do that first and then I'll insulate this section and the section up the back. Um, and I've also really annoyingly run out of these spaces. Um, I haven't quite got enough to do the last few sections so I'm going to have to try and get hold of some more of these. Um, but for now, most of the ceiling's done. Uh, and I think it's okay. I've filled all the cavities as best I can. It's not the neatest job in the world, but hopefully it'll be sufficient. Um, obviously, I've still got a lot of exposed areas, but I still have to put my second layer um, of insulation up. So I'm putting the a metal and thermal break sheet, which will cover the whole thing, all of these bits of frame and everything, and hopefully act as a vapor barrier and completely seal it all off. So I still have to do that. Um, but for now, um, I'm pretty happy with how the foil board's gone in. Uh, and when I get my conduit, I'll be able to finish off these sections here and then make a start on the walls. So I managed to get some more spacer blocks and I also got some conduit so I was able to finish off the ceiling insulation. I ended up ditching the green foil board tape. It was fine for joining the foil board panels themselves together which is exactly what it's designed for um, but it wasn't really very good at sticking to the timber and the other parts of the frame and I ended up ditching it and using this stuff instead so this is silver reinforced insulation tape. Um, I actually bought this to stick the metal and thermal break which is the next layer of insulation that I'm going to be putting on um, but I tried it on the foil board and it actually works really well. It is way stickier than the green tape and it's also a lot easier to mold around all the odd curves and shape, shapes in the frame so I ended up ditching all of the green tape and replacing it with this stuff. Uh, it's a lot more expensive but I just think it does a much better job of sealing everything up. So this is how I ran the wires for my fans. I put them inside this heavy duty rigid conduit and you can see I've left a gap in between the foil board sheets to allow space for the conduit to pass and where these wires are coming out is actually where my overhead storage is going to be. So I should hopefully be able to have full access to where those wires are connecting into the rest of my system. Now if you're wondering why I went to so much effort to keep the foil board away from the conduit, it's because that the polystyrene in foil board can actually react when it comes into contact with certain types of polypropylene, which a lot of conduits and electrical wire coatings are made of. So that's something to be aware of if you're using foil board or some other kind of polystyrene insulation, that you just need to make sure that you protect your wiring and use the right kind of conduit. Now, from what I've read, I, my understanding is that it's the plasticizers in a lot of the flexible polypropylene conduits that cause the problem. So that's why I've gone for the orange heavy duty rigid conduit because it's made of unplasticized polypropylene and therefore should be safe. And just as an extra precaution, you know, that's why I taped the edges of the foil board that were close to the conduit just to try and prevent any contact down the track because once I've put my ceiling lining in I'm not going to be able to access most of the length of that conduit so I'm just it may seem like overkill to some people what I've done there uh, but you know it's just really important for me that I try and minimize any potential risk of fire or other problems with my electrical installation in this bus so I'm just doing trying to do things as safely uh, as I can to prevent any problems in the future. So let me show you what the finished ceiling looks like. I'm pretty pleased with how it's looking so far and you can see just how much better that silver insulation tape moulds into the frame. And if you're wondering how I'm going to know where my timber battens are now that everything's covered up, I've actually marked the position of them on the side of the bus. B is for the beam, the metal roof beam, and next to that is the W is for wood, so that's my where my timber batten is. And I've also marked where the wires are coming through from the fans. So I've marked quite a large area here to make sure that when I screw in anything into this, this side wall, I'm steering well clear of where that conduit is running. So now that the ceiling's done, it's time to make a start on the walls. So the way I'm going to do these wall panels is you can see here that a lot of them, especially in this upper section, have these ridges that stick out. Um, and it works out that if I put the spaces, if I stick the spaces to those ridges,
then it works out that when I put my foil board in, it sits, it's pretty close to sitting flush with the front of this frame here. there's still a little bit of a gap but it's pretty close to the frame and I should be able to tape that up nicely with the silver tape. Um, so that's how I'm going to do the top sections of these bits of the walls. When I come to do these sections I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet because there aren't any ridges like this so if I put the, even if I put the spacer here on the wall it's still got the foil board still going to be quite a way back. Um, I may even end up just putting a double insulation of foil board there to bring the thickness out enough to so that it's close to the frame. I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough foil board to do that. So what I'm going to do is do all of the upper sections like this first and then I'll see how much foil board I've got left and then I'll make a decision about what I'm going to do with the lower parts of the frame. That's basically how I'm going to do the walls, very similar to what I did in the roof. It's just a matter of measuring the spaces and um, trying to fit the, the foil board pieces in as tight as you can get them. And for these little sections here, I'm just using some skinnier leftover pieces of the foil board, pushing them up into there and down into the space there as much as I can. I'm not worrying about the spaces here because in these sections there's actually an air gap between this wall and the back of, of back of these bits of the frame so there's technically an air gap already there. I'm not too concerned about the, putting the spaces in there and the foil board sheets um, just fit quite nicely in that space. And you can see what I mean here, this section I've already done. I've filled this part of the frame here with the skinny pieces. And then you can see here how I've taped up these sections of the wall. So even though they're sitting a little bit of a way back behind the frame, um, that silver tape really does seal it all nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the walls the same way. And this is the end result. It took a lot longer than I expected to do the walls just because there were so many little angles and awkward corners to try and get the foil board into. But I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out in the end. And you can see here how I did the foil board over the rear windows. I just did these in the same way as the wall cavities, stuck the spaces directly onto the inside of the windows and then put my foil board sheets over the top of that. So the first stage of my insulation is all done. I've put the foil board in as many of the cavities of the frame as I possibly can. The next step is to cover the whole lot with the a metal and thermal break sheet. But I need to have a bit of a think about exactly how to attach the ametalin and I may end up doing it in conjunction with some of the internal framing. So stay tuned for that. 